As hand, I speak with the king's voice on this and all other matters. To King's Landing, then. Tomorrow, the High Towers land their first blow. Those vipers rule in my father's name. The Sea Snake has taken a grave wound in battle in the Stepstones. Who will take the Driftwood throne? This is a matter of blood, not ambition. This is a trap. The crown cannot stand strong if the House of the Dragon remains divided. Nephews? The threat of war looms. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my House of the Dragon episode eight trailer video. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references here, so we'll break it down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get them and careful for spoilers from episode seven if you haven't seen it yet, because we'll have to talk about that to talk about what happens in episode eight, because there is another small time jump. Like you probably noticed that the younger actors seem like teenagers now, so I'll explain what's happened in the missing gap of years, but it's a much smaller gap than we've seen in previous episodes. Just starting at the beginning of the trailer and working our way through shot by shot talking about Easter eggs WTF moments, there are a couple major things happening in this trailer. Like one, you have the threat of the high towers taking over the Iron Throne because Viserys has become an invalid basically. And they also talk about the threat of war happening in the trailer. That references a couple different conflicts like the actual Dance of the Dragons, Targaryen, Civil War, but also you have what's going on with Corlys Valerian's brother, Vaemon Valerian, in the Stepstones. There was another war with the Triarchy and possibly Dorne that they were worried about in a previous episode, and that's just been heating up ever since then. They only briefly addressed that in last week's episode when Laenor Valerian was talking about his lover going back to the Stepstones because the conflict is still getting worse. It's sort of like another version of the big war that we had in the Stepstones during episode three. But you have to remember that several years have gone by since the last time that they actually discussed the war during the small council. Like we should probably do something about what's going on in the Stepstones. No, 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 let's worry about it later. Not a big problem now. Turns out later is right now. It's become a big problem. So the threat of war looms all over Westeros, internally and externally down in the Stepstones. And even though it seems like the opening salvos have been fired in the Dance of the Dragons because of the big Alicent versus Rhaenyra fight in episode seven, it hasn't quite got to that point yet. We're a little bit closer, everyone's got a little bit older, people have gotten a little bit bitter, but the all out blacks versus greens fighting hasn't started yet. So at the beginning of the trailer, several years have gone by. The kids are now teenagers for the most part. Although you have to remember that some of them were a little bit older to begin with. So like for instance, Aegon II was already way older than Jacares. So Jacares seems like he's a younger teenager now. And it seems like Aegon II is probably approaching his twenties almost. And even though Aemond One-Eye Targaryen looks way different, way older than Aegon II, you have to remember that he's his younger brother. He just happens to be way taller. And the years of writing Vagar have only made him more cruel. I'll explain that too because the actor who played the younger version of him when he claimed Vagar actually talked about the switch like once he claimed Vagar that changed something inside him he changed from being this very meek person to sort of freeing the beast so to speak freeing this cruel person that was inside of him but you look at Alice's children and it just seems like the years have only made their faces that much more punchable although it is kind of silly to call them children because we were watching Rhaenyra and Alicent being about the same age that they were in the first couple of episodes but it seems like what's happened in the years since the last episode is that Viserys' condition has gotten worse and he's become bedridden and can no longer actively rule like you would normally expect him to do day to day stuff. So the fact that Otto Hightower, Hand of the King, has taken over a lot of these duties isn't abnormal like you would expect the Hand of the King to do this. It's just that we have the whole conflict, the Dance of the Dragons going on with the Blacks versus the Greens and that's what's caused them to be worried. And if you remember a long time ago in the timeline, a couple episodes ago, before a couple big time jumps, Rhaenyra basically said, screw you to King's Landing in court and said, let's go to Dragonstone, let's get away from all the gossip. But this is where it starts to bite them in the ass because she hasn't been around her father all these years and his condition has given the Hightowers ample opportunity to try and take control of the Iron Throne, so to speak. Like the way that Otto Hightower is speaking in the throne room here, I speak with the authority of the king. So basically he can do whatever he wants to. He has all the power right now. And it seems like this is what brings Damon and Rhaenyra back to King's Landing because she's probably worried about her father. And even though you do see the kids fighting during the trailer, like you see the older version of Bela and Reyna there as well, because obviously Damon's gotten remarried to Rhaenyra, so they moved to Dragonstone as well. So now you have the twins, Jacaris and Lucerys, and I can't quite tell if Rhaenyra is pregnant with her first child, Damon. She might have already given birth to him, or they might save that for season two. 
I think there'll probably be at least like one or two more smaller time jumps by the time season two, season three get going, just because of how much later in the timeline the actual Dance of the Dragons happens and the aftermath. If we're making jokes about the kids too, you could actually say that Rhaenyra and Daemon's children have gotten better looking with time and Allison's children have actually gotten worse looking with time. Like time has not been kind to Allison's children. Also, you have the whole idea that Aegon really liked drinking when he was younger and that only gets worse when he gets older. That winds up affecting his long-term health just like a little bit. And obviously, Aemon has just gotten more and more twisted inside. As weird as Helena is, like we know that she has dragon dreams, so she's got this weird aspect about her that they haven't fully explored yet. Like we know there's something special about her because she has dragon dreams. I'm sure the years have also made her just as much weirder. It'll be real fun to see what kind of prophecies she speaks during episode 8. Like every time we have a new episode, she speaks some new prophecies. And if you couldn't tell, on the left of Rhaenyra here, that's Jacaris, her older son. Lucerus is later in the trailer. You also notice that they're wearing their trademark blacks and greens because we're like that much closer to the Dance of the Dragons, and it is the blacks versus the greens. That was also part of Helena's prophecy during episode 7 when she talked about the black and green dragons in the Dragons of Thread. It was meant to be a reference to the color of the dresses that both of these women wear. They are both dragons because they're part of the Targaryen family, but also it's meant to be a reference to the dragons themselves actually fighting each other when the actual war starts. A couple of the brand new dragons that they haven't shown in the trailers yet, but that the kids have claimed since then are Bela and Reyna's dragons, obviously, and Lucerus's dragon. Lucerus's dragon is named Arax. He claimed him normally like you would expect them to at a young age. Now, way back in the timeline, Bela already had her dragon. Its name was Moondancer. Reyna was the one that wanted to claim Vagar because she didn't have a dragon yet, but Aemon did it from under her nose. During the time jump since the last episode, she's probably claimed a dragon in that time. Its name is Morning, but you do notice that most of the kids on the show, except for Aemon because Vagar is the oldest, biggest dragon, most of the kids' dragons are way smaller, way younger. When Princess Rhaenys is saying that tomorrow the High Towers land their first blow, I think this just has something to do with them taking control of the Iron Throne because of Viserys becoming a full-blown invalid. Like maybe that just happened during the events of this episode. It also seems like Corlys Valerian is on his deathbed. He suffered some grave injury down in the Stepstones because they've been fighting that for the last couple years. I believe this is meant to be his bedroom because in the background, it seems like it is Princess Rainey's at his bedside. And here's the thing about the actual episode. The title is The Lord of the Tides, which is a reference to the Lord of House Valerian, the ruler of Driftmark. And there's a lot of footage of his brother, Vaemon Valerian, in this. If you remember last week's episode, there was this whole question of who was going to take possession of Driftmark someday. Would it be Lucerys like Corlys thought it would be? Or would it be Lena's children like Rhaenys wanted it to be? But you also have to remember that Vaemon Valerian, Corlys's brother, has a claim to Driftmark that he's going to want to assert. And he really, really hated Daemon. If you remember back in episode 3, like way earlier in the timeline, he really hated him. That has not changed with time. Just from the look on his face, it just seems like he's ready to assert his claim here. He also comes marching into the Red Keep with a bunch of Valerian's men, and I believe the idea is that he's taking command of their army in the Stepstones in Corlys' absence. There's a scene of older Kristen Cole training with older Aemon Targaryen. You hear Viserys' voice, he sounds way worse. In the earlier trailer, we actually see a picture of him in later trailers. I believe this is what he's meant to look like. Like, he wears a mask to cover part of his face because his leprosy has gotten so bad. Like, in the last episode, you actually saw that he lost an arm already. So it seems like he can barely walk, but for the most part, they believe that he's going to be bedridden from here on, meaning that he might wind up dying in episode nine. Like that would be a very Ned Stark thing of him to do. And we've been talking about him in a Ned Stark context. It's kind of like ticking clock waiting for him to die because the actual dance of the dragons can't really start until he does die. This is Jacaris and Lucerus in the yard watching somebody come through the gate. This is Damon on Dragonstone grabbing another dragon egg. We'll see who he tries to give it to. He could be getting one for his new child with Rhaenyra. Remember previously, he made this big deal about getting Maseria pregnant, even though that was a lie. And he tried to pretend like he was going to give her a dragon egg, even though it was a big feint. He was trying to do it to get under his brother Viserys' skin. This time it's for real though. He's legitimately married Rhaenyra. It's all above board. So he's totally free to have as many children as he wants with her and give them all dragon eggs. The person saying this is a matter of blood, not ambition, is Corlys Valerian's brother, probably talking to Rhaenys about the succession. This is the scene of the children fighting. Jacaris, Aemond, Aegon, Lucerys, and the girls are there too, Bela and Reyna, like just shocked about what's going on. Whatever they're arguing about in this room here. Remember, I said in episode 7, the whole idea that they're exploring through the show, in addition to just the actual Dance of the Dragons itself, 
is the idea that the adults, like Allison and Rhaenyra, are passing this beef that they have between them on to their children. And previously, their children actually kind of liked each other. So it's sort of this idea that the adults are poisoning the youth, so to speak. Miseria comes back into the story. She's been around this whole time, but she just hasn't been a big part of what's actually going on. She's kind of like a version of Lara Strong, but for Rhaenyra and Daemon. Unofficially, she's kind of like the Mistress of Whispers, more like a Varys character. She's a little bit less chaotic than Laris, but she's just as deadly. And I also believe because of what's happening in the yard here, like you see Aemon say, Nephews, he's talking to Jacaris and Lucerus. It's meant to be a callback to the events of Episode 6 when they were fighting in the yard and they were much younger. Now the idea that Aemon has gotten way larger, like he's just physically grown way bigger and he's grown way more cruel. And at the end of the trailer in a small council meeting, Otto Hightower talks about the threat of war looming. Like I said, that's meant to be a reference to the conflict heating up between the Greens and the Blacks. But really what he's probably talking about in this context is actually about what's happening in the Stepstones. There's also the potential that Vaim and Valerian could take their forces and also start a conflict over the Battle of the Succession over Driftmark as well. So technically you could talk about there being three possible wars that they have to fight. If you spotted any other Easter eggs or references in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. In my full episode 8 video, we'll post Sunday after they release it. I do have a couple bonus videos planned for this week too. We also just got a brand new Black Panther 2 trailer. I'll do a video for that next, so make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my full House of the Dragon episode 7 video and click here for all my other House of the Dragon videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.